This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the March 15th Board of Finance meeting. <clears throat> Welcome to all of our regular members, those in the audience. Uh, we are going to start with the um, minutes of the meeting held on February 15th. We have the minutes in our agenda. Any comments or a motion? Anyone like to move the minutes? I make a motion. I'll, Se I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, all business is none, although I don't know if this may be the right time to say that the members did receive some correspondence via emails, uh, which arrived as we sat tonight. I, I personally haven't had a chance to read more than one or two, but um, we, did get some, uh, we did get some correspondence. Uh, item three, um, with the unfortunate passing of Mr. Uh, Jim Leonis, uh, we do have a vacancy in the office of uh, Vice Chairman. Um, I would like to ask that uh, we have a nomination. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a nomination to nominate Diane Vesicchio as Vice Chairman. I'd like to second that. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, any, um, any questions, any conversation, any comments? I'd like to know our qualifications for the job. <laughs> oh. I'll rule that out of order and ask if there's any other comments. As I've stated before, I, I've always been very impressed with Diane. Uh, she comes to every Board of Finance meeting, every workshop, very prepared, asking very insightful questions. She served as the Vice Chair of the Middle School Building Committee for five long years, which was a labor of love. And uh, this town really owes her a tremendous debt to that student. So I, I certainly appreciate her willingness to serve, if she was willing, uh, as the Vice Chair of this Board of Finance. Thank you, Nancy. I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Diane, any words you'd like to pass on before we move on? Thank you, Nancy, for the kind of Sure, of course. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, we do have our regular reports, which we will go to next. Uh, we have the budget, uh, which follows as item four. Um, that's obviously um, the main work of tonight's meeting, as it always is at our March meetings. Um, so, without trying to shorten anyone's comment, let's try and get through the regular reports um, with some speed. So, why don't we go to the revenue perk first? Any questions for Ingrid? Any comments on the uh, revenue side? Yeah, I have a question. Um, where it says town miscellaneous receipts, that's like a lump of a lot of items. Like, what types of items is that? Like, um, what what would what would be in that number? Um, because I noticed the actuals are that was the I mean, storm. Uh, it wasn't like it was um, it was from the state. We got some extra money from the state, right? Well, that's, that's fine. Yeah, normally it's uh, land use fees, some uh, miscellaneous fees that happen to the building department that aren't uh, building permit fees. But a large chunk of that is 457000 roughly, received from the state that we didn't budget for, which was part of uh, a sales tax uh, incentive that the municipalities received a distribution of. So there's, a, there's several things in there. A lot of smaller type mm -hmm. things that get put in there. But landing the fees would be a good example. Thank you, Mike. I think it's great to see the the tax collections are are so strong here. So great, great work from the town. We're at ninety. We're at ninety-nine percent for those who were at the audience in the audience. Sorry, more at home. Yeah, ninety-nine percent of the ninety-eight point five of the budget. Yes, ninety-nine percent of the budget. Correct. Also nice to see that the, the building fees have such a, uh, such a robust um, 
Well, we had uh, about two hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars in one project that I've been working on. That was a big, big uh, plus on here. So, and uh, I hope to push it up. These large amounts can continue with some of these projects we're trying to bring forward here. So, you notice on the uh, on the um, interest income, what we've done is we've uh, redefined all of our accounts that were earning 0 0.10, and uh, now we're earning 4.3, 4.4, 3.8. So we've increased our interest income also with the amount of money that we have. Yeah, now on that interest income though, uh, is, is that something that we um, account for on a monthly basis? Because it, it um, this, this is showing zero for the, for the last month, for the month of, uh, of, uh, of February. Um, the number is good, and I hope the number stays strong, but under actual month-to-date revenue, it, it, there's, there's nothing there. Yeah, I think it, it's just a timing it issue. It might be so. a timing issue, yeah, yes. So. Um, I'm assuming we record that when we get the bank statement. When do you record that? When he gets, uh, Michael gets the statements, yes. Right. But you would think, Mike, obviously that it's a monthly statement. There would be a... Would be an insurance. Well, you know, it's yeah. not a leap year, so who knows. Right. Uh, any other questions on revenue? If not, we'll move on to expenditures. I would comment before we go on, um, just doing some simple math. Um, given that it's February, that's uh, if we're all done on a level basis, we'd be through about 66.64% of the budget. Uh, we're showing about 70 because most of the members know there's some lumpy items in here. Most notably, just look at the last page. The principal interest on the bonds and the interest on the notes and bonds themselves are lumpy. Um, I think I did a little math which shows that if, if you smooth that out a little bit, we're probably um, roughly right on target at about 66% expended year to date. Having said that, if any members have questions, please go ahead. Any thoughts as to why it's uh, lumpy? Sure, because the payments are only done once or twice a year. Yeah, a lot of this is front loaded. Just the principal notes. Right. I'm sorry, just the, just the interest bonds and notes, whereas the principal bonds and notes are paid. Well, the principal bonds and notes are already fully expended, and, and they have been, I think, mm -hmm. for I mean, they're generally pegged to either once or twice a year, uh, Nancy, is my, my guess, mm -hmm. which is why we're fully expended based on the principal and the notes. And the interest itself, though, you might think it's monthly. I, I don't think it is. Yeah. Ingrid may know, but I, I don't think it is. I mean, we're, we're three quarters of the way expended on that already as well. What about on page 12, equipment rental? <coughs> um. This was the equipment lent, uh, rental for Lee pickup. This was for uh, There was uh, extra runs uh, for resident calls. And just in general, we always talk about this. Office supplies are always. They're high. This they're high. Year, yes. Now, that's a contract, right, that we have? With no, them? no, no. We don't it's have a contract with an office supply? <coughs> no, uh, we use. Uh, whoever gives us the best price. So it, it it's so it's per Amazon or WB. They choose. They budget and see who's giving them at that time what they okay, need at the best so, price. All right. So it's each department when they need it, then they they do the search. So it's right. not like we have an overall contract. Okay. Yes. Andrew, can you talk to us a little bit about the fire department on page ten? The contractual. I think it's replacement staffing. Is that? Is that are those like temporary employees to help offset some of the? Um, where it looks like we're under budget from a full-time perspective, but can you give us some color on that line? I will have to find out on that line. All right, Nick. What yeah. what happened here was we we split the overtime line a year or two ago into okay. the two lines: one overtime, one contractual replacement. So the contractual replacement is simply <clears throat> a fireman takes a holiday. Right, so he got back to the shift, right? So another fireman takes a spot, which could be, you know, extra hours for that particular week, right? So Mike may have other examples, but that's the one I would offer, and that's what that line is. So we should think of, like, full-time, personal full-time in that contractual replacement staffing line as one, because if you put them together, we're 
we're in a good place. For yeah, it's just that you know you, you can't be paying more than you know a regular straight time for this line item. But, but they're not they're not outside. These are these are yep. town North Haven employees. I understand. Thanks. And and most importantly, it's uh, the contractual replacement staffing is at time and a half. Right. So uh, whereas obviously the full time employees are. Thank you. Overtime is a separate issue. On that same page okay. uh, for fire, uh, the medical supply line is obviously about 30% over already this year. And I'm sure that there are supply chain increases due to uh, inflation that affect every single department. This is no different. But is there a particular reason that this line is so high? Is it, is it Narcan? Is it other supplies? It's just supplies. I've looked it up many times and it's right. supplies. And do we provide any additional supplies to uh, to Nelcon, who is also serving this town? Or are they responsible for buying all of their own supplies? I'll have to ask the chief. Yeah. Okay. No, I can't imagine we're buying supplies from Nelcon. Yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine not, anywhere. but right. you know, sometimes yeah. when the ambulances go to the hospitals, they might you know restock a, a blanket or something like that. So I wasn't quite sure if we were doing the same kind yeah, of thing. We are subsidized. Yeah, we okay. are subsidized. That's my question. Thank you. Okay. Mike, any questions on the expenditures? Um, no, the same question, I think, that just to repeat a question from last month. <clears throat> uh, the winter maintenance supplies. Um, page 12? What page, what page, page? Uh, It's page 13. I don't have a problem with the, the number because, as Mr. Frieda, I believe, said, um, we're contracted to, to purchase so much, and, and, uh, and we, we certainly um, always want to have uh, adequate supply. But uh, the question being, if, if these items can be stockpiled for next year, can we reduce that line on the budget uh, that we're uh, working on? Uh, well, <clears throat> the answer is yes, but we don't know what more, how many more storms we're going to have. Yeah, gonna have right. But by the end of by April, April we, would, we would probably know. Okay. Didn't last month there was a there was a was going to wasn't the question raised that we can we can we back did out some yeah. of the we way. did reduce some in open encumbrances for yeah. the salt you brought this up yes yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. we did so I mean okay by April we'll re we'll we'll see what sort of no no I I, I there was a Ingrid there was can a probably huge, tell us yes. how much do you, how much was the encumbrance last month do you remember um. Uh, it was forty seven thousand dollars encumbered but what what's strange is that the number year to date is also different. So last month it was listed as one hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars, and this year, year to date, is fifty-one, fifty-two thousand. So year to date, um, and as well as in coverage, is substantially different. I, I can check on that, but that was um, some open encumbrances that we had for the salt that we adjusted. Right. Okay. But Mike, I think what you're saying is, tell me if I'm wrong. That if we find that at the end of April we have a high inventory of salt, as an example, yeah. that's what you're asking, right? We, we is like it possible? That, yeah, yeah. It is possible, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. In which case, we can come back to that when yes. we're talking about the budget. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thanks much. All right. If there's no other questions on the expenditures, why don't we go over to special funds? Yeah, I think you're right, Nancy. When you look at the the, uh, the BOE reports, that's basically all almost fully accounted for. He's got a report in that somewhere in the, yes, our package. Exactly. And I like yeah. To 
Any other comments, questions on the special funds? If not, let's go to the BUE, please. the other variable is that the PTA made a donation towards the playground and, and this is how Howard accounted for it, right? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Right. But the point is, if that is the case, then the PTA should pay their portion to whatever the vendor is and then the remainder or whatever the balance is should come from the, uh, the capital improvement fund as opposed to making deposits into this and then Howard makes an outlay from there. I'm just saying for the purpose of actually being able to say this fund includes funds from surplus as well as from you know, other sources, it would be really nice if we simply had a single fund with surpluses from the previous years. I think you're aware that's that's what's going to happen with the MOU, right? We already well, talked it's, about it's, we're going it's down It's not down going down. to happen if this, in fact, is the case. Because if they can actually make deposits from PTAs and the North Haven Education Foundation and other sources can be deposited into this fund, then it is commingling of different sources. Right. Um, OK, so the second point that I'd like to make is if you actually look at the very long sheets that we get from um, the finance office regarding the, uh, the three special reserve funds for the Board of Education, and as I mentioned before, if you look at the, very, the second one, um, and you look at the lower right-hand corner, you'll see that, as I mentioned, the, this is the capital improvement fund. They started with about $600,000 balance, and by the end of the year, with all the expenses and the encumbrances, they're going to wind up with about $7,000. And so I have no problem with that whatsoever. I'm just making the point that if they're going to basically empty this particular fund this year, how exactly are we going to pay for the Board of Ed capital requests that are uh, included in the five-year plan? They're not included in any budget. So the, in my opinion, the only way that can happen is if the Board of Education in the current fiscal year is expecting a surplus of at least $385,000 that they pay for those capital requests. For so just put a pin in that for when we come back to the budget, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, and then in the actual document that uh, was sent to us attached to the memorandum from, from Howard, uh, if you go to the second page of the budget <coughs> that includes the notes, Wait, which, which document are we looking at? So, so this is the packet from Board of Ed this that one. has the very first page okay, is the memorandum from Howard. And I think it's the third page in the packet. Um, if you look down at the bottom of that page uh, where the notes are, it says waiting for reimbursement from state grant. Now again, the only reason I'm mentioning this is that this is an example of a budgeted line item in the Board of Ed budget in which there has been an expenditure and it will be reimbursed by an outside grant. When I asked Howard if there are any outside grants from the federal or state government or other sources that are used to cover operating expenses, he said no. But here's an example that actually proves that that is the case. And so that money is then freed up and it can be used in one of four ways. It can either be used to pay for additional expenses in that line item it can be used to pay for expenses in other line items through transfers. It can be used to pay for expenses that have never been budgeted. And it certainly can be set aside towards the surplus at the end of the year. 
I, I took this this one as as we're over budget by about eighty thousand dollars, and that this grant was going to get us back to um, back to budget. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I, I think we have to actually look at, and I have some examples that I can share with you later of exactly those ESSER three transfers, in some cases ESSER two transfers, that are used to not just supplement the budget, but actually to reimburse particular items. So I'm happy to share that with you a little bit later. Um, and then um, lastly, I, I'd just like to point out in that same budget, uh, uh, again on the, I guess this is on the fourth page, again the, the budget line items that also have the notes. If you look at the column that totals up to $42,019,220, that represents the year-to-date expenditure for the Board of Education. What I'd like to highlight is the very tiny, tiny print below that that uh, draws a comparison to this exact same point a year ago in which the 2021-2022 spending for this particular, at this particular point in the year was in fact 58394 so in fact, we've, we're spending sixteen thousand dollars less no, this you're year. Talking, you're talking millions. I'm sorry, fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand, sixteen million dollars less this year than last year. I have no understanding as to why that is, and the way that they set it up is the current year minus last year, so they're showing a deficit of parentheses, sixteen million. So that to me seems like a pretty pretty big difference, and I, I don't really have an understanding as to why. And that's it for board bed. I don't, I don't think any of us know. I, I can't. I couldn't read that honestly, Nancy. It was so it's, small. It is. Tiny. You could barely read it. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it, I. Um, the, those are the numbers. I could see them. Those are the numbers. Um, yeah. Can we also no. No, ask, we, make a note I, um, about this report? It, it, we, I've said this before. They need to have headers when it goes to and oh, it, absolutely. And yeah, it needs I to carry them over. <laughs> it, right, and it needs to be darker. That like yeah. this is not really readable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll talk to well, I have you. an I have an explanation for that. Right. Thank you. you yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, that must be in uh, included just to compare the. Uh, the first uh, five columns because there are headers on the page before mm -hmm. and it sh shows Q1, Q2, January, February, and Q3. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what those T numbers sh also show though is that there's expenditures for Q4 which haven't occurred yet and that's why that $58 million figure is for the entire year on, in the small figures. So it's not it's not what the cumulative amount is of year-to-date expense uh, as of the date of this report. So... I, I think it lists encumbrances. You know, and, and, and those exist for both. Okay, but I just want you to know that... See, you see the, the column, with, see the column with all the dashes? Yeah. Yeah, that, there's $18 million below that. Yeah. And that's what was spent in, in quarter four of last year. Right. And so that so that amount over in the far right column, below, oh, not far right. Well, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, that fifty-eight million dollar figure uh, is for uh, all four quarters of the year, not not this uh, uh, fiscal year to date figure of, of forty-two so, million. So right. we're actually about two million over. Again, I, I don't know why they would list these numbers yeah. if the point is to compare where we are now this year with <laughs> where we were last well, year. Well, they should have left off uh, the, the numbers in the last three uh, uh, columns uh, in, the, in the small numbers because mm -hmm. it's, I think it's, it's just to, to compare spending uh, up to this point, which is the first five columns in this report. And we can ask Howard to clean it up. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for help, Mike. Any other comments, questions on the BOE budget? Sorry, monthly report. If not, I'd like a motion on the uh, reports, please. All right. I move to approve the reports as presented. I'll second them. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Great. Thank you very much. All right. Um, we now have the budget. Um, I'm going to make a couple introductory remarks, um, and then we'll open it up to the, the members for, for, for their own comments. So just for those in the audience and those at home, uh, the way the process works is we get a budget that's, uh, in this case, it's the January budget. It was dated January 18th. Um, uh, that budget was uh, $124 million. $612,000. Uh, it represented a 7.4% increase over the 2022 numbers. That breaks down to about 12.2% in the town, and the BOE was about 2.87%. Um, uh, we then meet with the various department heads. Um, they take us through the budgets. Um, there are some suggested cuts uh, that occur. We'll go through those in a minute. Um, but the result is the budget that we have in front of us, uh, which is now $121,940,000. It's a 5% increase versus the 7.4 we had in January. And that breaks down to a 2.46% uh, increase in the BOE, again, versus the 287 they gave us. And the town is 7.9. Again, that's versus the 12.2% we had back in, back in January. Um, <coughs> Now, the conversation this evening is primarily about the expenses, uh, but we do have revenues in, in the document that the, uh, that the members have in front of them. And I guess I would just point out a couple things. Uh, first of all, the way I sort of look at this is that, you know, we've got various buckets of revenue, but I think all of us here in the room and those at home understand that the, by far for North Haven, the biggest item is the, um, is the taxes that we assess against the, the properties in town. Uh, but just for perspective, if you look at the um, projected revenues that are in this document and you net out the, uh, the taxes that are here, what you're going to find is that our other source of revenue are down about $2.1 million versus last year. So last year we had about, about $19 million in what I call other revenue, and this has about 16.9. Um, the two biggest reasons for that are the ESSER $1 and $3, which um, are, we're about a million dollars in, in 22-23 and are zero in the current budget. Um, and the other item is the uh, ARPA money, which was a million six seventy in the 22-23 budget and is zero this year. That's, by the way, because um, the ARPA laws, I understand it, allowed towns to take a general allocation and put it towards their, their operating expense, which we did last year. Um, although I'm not privy to all the numbers, I think Mike could confirm that any ARPA money that we had uh, that remained is now uh, fully accounted for by products in town, so we don't have that, that luxury uh, this year. There are some other movements here. And by the way, I would point out that some of the big numbers here have been confirmed by OPM for the members. So our ECS number of 4182 did come from OPM, as did the pilot money, which you're going to find out, by the way, when you do the math, they, they sort of net out to no increase. Um, uh, the grants for missile projects also, uh, again, it's the same number, but that was an OPM number that we got. Um, uh, a couple other movements I'll just mention briefly. Uh, we heard the discussion on short-term investments, so we are increasing the budget on that item from 150 to 500. Uh, debt service reserve, which was zero last year, is now 450. And again, for the members uh, and those at home, those are premiums we earn on our bond placements that we uh, we set aside. and. Once they accumulate, they're available to be used um, in, in the budget like this. We have used them in prior years. There just wasn't any last year. You'll see there's about 122. Um, project fund transfers, Nancy, you just kind of mentioned that a second ago. Uh, but they are we are projecting to be down a little bit from 550 to 250. And uh, I would say, in my opinion, those are the major, yeah. major movements in the revenue side. Yeah, so let me just... Uh further illustrate this. So we received an increase uh, in ECS of about $313,000 that goes to the Board of Education. But we received a decrease in the town pilot of about $289,000. So the town took a hit, revenue two eighty nine. dollars uh, Board of Ed, uh, through the ECS, will get $313,000 more. Thanks, Mike. Uh, just one or two other couple of comments for me, and then again, we'll open it up. But um, 
you know, we always sort of, sort of look at the major movers when Mike gives his presentation in the, uh, in the high school in a couple weeks, and then again uh, later in, um, in May, you know, he'll talk about the, the major movers that, that hit the budget. And uh, just to give an idea, you know, the police department is up over 800,000, fires about five, um, pension, social security about three quarters of a million dollars, uh, insurance about 720, and uh, payments on our bonds, that's principal interest, is up about $666,000. So that's about 3.5 million, give or take, in just those, those five categories. Um, the, um, the police and fire, um, I don't have my notes, but part of the reason for that is we have added to staff there in the last, uh, last year or so. So just for the general public, so uh, Tim just mentioned that the debt service has gone up. And what happens sometimes in the government, if you see a new building, like the middle school or the police department, when you see it brand new, that means the payments have just begun. So our debt service has increased this year, and I had to explain this to the rating agencies, because we're paying now uh, more on the middle school and more on the police departments, we're still paying off the fire departments, and I think we've just about retired the debt, believe it or not, on the high school, which was which opened up in 2005. So additionally, we pave roads every year. The cost of paving roads is going from two million for 10 miles to 2.6 million, a 30 percent increase from an inflation standpoint. Everything we do, some of the line items that we talked about earlier, were affected by this inflation. So. When we look at debt service, we have to pay the debt. If we look at health insurance, we have to pay the health insurance. And the way it works in government, not just North Haven, every city and town across the state, when the markets go down from an investment standpoint, the towns and cities have to make up the difference for those who are pensioners. And municipalities in the past have have really put the pensioners in a difficult spot by kicking that can down the road. So what that means is that our annual required contributions go up when the markets go down. So these are, these are fixed expenses that sometimes we can't do anything about. And what we will never do, for as long as this administration is here, is kick cans down the road because it catches up with you. And one municipality had to take out a $120 million pension obligation bond to fund the difference between kicking that pension plan down the road. I think for as long as I've been on this board, I'll, I will give the town credit for one thing. I think we've always financed the annually required contribution that Mike is talking about 100%. Um, because of other factors, some of which he mentioned, you know, our, our actual funding levels on the pension plans uh, do fluctuate. But <clears throat> I think we have been consistent over the years in funding that item 100%. Let me just hit one or two other things, and again, we'll go to the members. Uh, members have a decrement list as proposed here. It totals $2,672,000. Um, it, is, it is heavy on the capital side. Uh, at the bottom, you see some personnel adjustments in the finance office. I'll do the math for you and let you know that those numbers net out to zero anyways. Um, so the rest is listed there in, in capital above. There's a slight adjustment in the election uh, expense. And then I just want to comment at the bottom on the Board of Ed. Um, there is a number here, a decrement of $250,000. I think uh, all of us, I'm not sure if you were there, Diane, but um, we're here when the Board of Ed gave their, um, gave their workshop. Um, they did have three positions which were funded by grants in the past that they wanted to convert to, uh, to full-time positions. Um, <coughs> That was in their budget. That was a slightly different presentation than we got from the town side. There was at least three positions proposed on the town side that were not in their numbers. They were discussed at our workshops. Um, so they were presented a little bit differently. Um, I think the feeling was that uh, given that we all know it's a tough budget year, that we didn't think it prudent to have any new hires. So while the Board of Ed um, has a latitude to to manage their system the way they would like, and they could very well decide, by the way, to, to maintain those three positions. The 250 cut does represent the all-in cost of, uh, of those three positions. 
Uh, the only other thing I would say, and uh, Nancy, I'm um, sort of thinking of you here, if you don't mind. Uh, I'll try and find an example. I'm going to pull my budget out. But one thing I'll point out, I'll give you an example. Let me give me one second. Oh, here we go. If the members wouldn't mind going to page 40, just for, for instance. So, Nancy, I know over the years you paid particular attention to the employment tables. Um, you'll notice at the very bottom of this page, it says substitute librarian one. You'll notice there's no budget for this year or next year. Yes. So, um, we check with our town attorney, Mr. D'Onofrio, <coughs> on the question of <clears throat> the employment tables and, and who manages the employment tables, if you will. And, and the answer we got was that, you know, the the hiring, firing, promotion, movement of employees is a management matter. We do control the dollars. And, you know, therefore, in theory, um, a department head could promote someone, but they have to have the dollars in their budget. So, in this case here, um, I don't know the specifics, but I understand that the library like, may want to create a position for a substitute librarian, which is why you have a zero item there. Um, but their budget of 682, 431 for, for um, personnel would not change. So basically what we're doing is we're highlighting the fact that she may like, she may want to create this position. She can do that, but she's got to find the dollars within her overall 682, 431. There it looks like a, a library two is being moved up to a library one. Going uh, from, there are other movements. I think you're going Mike, from, I think you're going right from there. three people to two. Uh, that's what it, that's what appears. Oh, I think that is a movement yes. within this yes. budget. But I think this the subject. So it's a re, it's a reclassification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's you know. Well, I mean, listen. We we all have senior employees that retire, right? And every company in every municipality has different levels of employees. You could hire someone in a lower level, right? Mm. Yes. And likewise, you have other people that can get promoted. Yeah. No, I, I, to yeah. me, that, that's completely understandable. So I'd just like to draw a very important distinction between promoting someone and creating a new position. Those are two very different things. Where you're adding a new position and ultimately adding to the total headcount, if you will, of your department, um, that is very different from simply moving someone from Librarian 1 to Librarian 2 to Librarian 3. Um, so uh, I think we went through this uh, with uh, the creation of positions in several different departments that has been questioned uh, over time. And I think just in fairness to the people that have to vote on the budget, that whatever the budget is when it's presented at the referendum has to be frozen in time. So I agree with you that uh, in theory, if it can be done without um, you know, ultimately costing the taxpayers more money, that's one issue. But I, I do believe that creating new positions is something that really should only be done to the extent possible at a budget workshop and presented as part of the overall budget. You know, Nancy, I, I'd have to ask Jeff what he thought about that. I mean, he did send me an email and... and um, well, his, his mentor actually create, uh, created a, a legal brief on this very issue, and I think was very clear about it. So, um, and, and in this particular department, I think Librarian 2 is also going from 0 to 1. So it's hard to say whether that means that that's a created position. I'm sure at some point in the distant past there was a Librarian 2, but in this particular year, they're going from 0 to 1. And again, that could be a promotion. Um, but it's, it's hard to know. So the, the question that you have right now that you're trying to explain is, is, is the employment table uh, or, or the, the, the salary listings for employees, is it uh, an explanatory supplement or is it a more or less uh, a a stipulation or mandatory list of, of uh, positions that must be uh, adhered to by de department heads. And that's, 
I know that's an open question, but we always um, wanted it uh, to be as uh, precise and as uh, a, 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 a structure um, that is uh, that is understood by the public to, to be uh, the the. the the, te the template for the year ahead. <clears throat> I think I understand you, Mike. I think the answer is yes. Right? I think we've had some questions, probably by Nancy, mm -hmm. uh, in regards yeah. to positions that might have been. Well, the, the real problem we had was when the fire department got reorganized mid-year yes. without yes. without coming before us, right. and we had a problem with that. Yes. yes, correct. So if anything like that happens again, we'll have a problem with it again. Right. Without resolving for just a moment the. Uh, the creation positions. I think my takeaway from having spoke, not spoke, but had an email from Jeff was that there can be movement within the tables. They got to adhere to the dollars, and that's our job to hold them to the dollars. And if you turn to page uh, 45, I think there is a new position within the senior center, which is uh, senior clerk. And I, I did go through this entire budget, and I agree with you. There is some some movement within a given department that might be, uh, represent promotions. But in this particular case, other, under senior center, senior clerk is something that did not exist in the current budget, and they're creating it as a full-time position. I think it was someone who had been working, Mike, is this true, as a part-time right. position. Right, that's what my yes. notes said. That was yes. a part-time or they moved full-time. But again, full -time it's there. creating a new position. Right. So, right, right. And, 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 and Mr. Monaco's position, I believe, uh, is also there. Right, and it's good because it's properly, note, properly noted to us in the budget. It's delineated, so. Yes, no, no. Yeah. But, you know, if the statement is made that we don't have any new positions, that's a new position. Okay, I've exhausted my comments for now. Um, if you have to open the members, we sort of generally go by seniority. Mm -hmm. Um, again, Mr. Frieda, would you like to make any comments? No, I defer to everyone else. Michael? Yeah. yeah. Um, at, as everyone uh, here knows, uh, this budgeting process this year is proving to be uh, uh, frustrating. But um, municipal governance and, and, and town administration, uh, it, it kind of encompasses uh, uh, many multiple responsibilities, including the education of the children, the upkeep of the community, uh, and even recreational and cultural elements that produce our quality of life. So we're faced with certain factors. This board is faced with certain factors that are beyond our control. The collective bargaining agreements are etched in stone. Uh, we certainly need labor to operate and the cost, that cost will continue to escalate every year by a rate of around two and a half percent. And two and a half percent of, uh, of a figure over a hundred million dollars is still a big number, uh, although that's not all labor. Um, external sources of funding as have been mentioned here by Mr. Mr. Dohaney and uh, and Mr. Frieda, um, in the upcoming cycle, uh, just to repeat, we need to overcome the loss of ARPA and ESSER funding. So even before we talk about higher costs, we have less money coming in to make up, uh, to pay for those expenses that have already uh, been budgeted in the current year, let alone the higher rate that might be in next year's budget. And that loss of revenue is uh, $1,987,000, just of those two uh, sources. So that is 0.75 of a mil, in, if you were converting that uh, to, uh, to our tax rate. Uh, about half of the $59 million non-education town budget is, is labor-related. Uh, and because con contractually driven, that increase uh, is around 2.5% per year. 
that adds up to another $1.475 million of dollars we have to find, which is another half a mil in taxes. So right now the proposed budget has a, a 2.1 mil rate increase. I know that's quite different than what's occurred in the last few years here. Um, but those two factors uh, of, um, of, of less revenue and higher contractual obligations uh, show that, that these issues are, are beyond the control of this board. And those two issues, 0.75 mil rate increase, one half of a mil increase, that's 60% of the increase that's in the, 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 this proposed budget. 60% of that 2.1 mil increase is just those two factors alone. And, and that doesn't even include the money, the extra money we have to put into the pension fund to keep that strong. So it's very frustrating. So given these obstacles, this board does the best it can to mitigate to mitigate the uh, the uncontrollable. And that's all I have to say at this moment. Diane, if you don't mind, before we go on uh, to you, I, I did fail to mention that um, uh, the current director of administration has done a, a great job at settling a number of union contracts with the town. Historically, I'm not sure if this happens in a lot of towns, I suspect it does, that a lot of the contracts have lagged for a long, long time. Um, so he has settled a number of the contracts. I think there's only one union that has an open contract this moment. Um, however, uh, selling all those contracts, especially when they've been open for more than one year, tends to have an adverse uh, effect on the budget um, because you've got uh, multiple years of raises that go into the salary line. And there can be some other things that, um, uh, that affect uh, the budget. Um, Mike will probably answer this better, but uniform allowance might go up, for instance, you know. So uh, I did feel the mention that. I apologize, Mike. Yeah, that's a big factor that uh, will have to be delineated to the public uh, in all the presentations. Thanks, Mike. I think, Michael, you summarized it very well, what the, what the predicaments are this year. I made a statement, ladies and gentlemen, at the State of the Town Address, and I think some people here were there, that although inflation raged at an 8.7% rate, we weren't the recipient of an 8.7% inflation rate, but we were at least 3%. And when you look at 3% on a $116, $114 million budget, that's, 3 that's over $3 million right there, in addition to some of the revenue figures that Michael was referring to. Now, to this board's credit, they came in with some decrements. We'll go through that in terms of maybe what we can do. And um, I may have some good news. I'll let you team me up on it, Tim, when you're ready regarding health insurance. So I think we should proceed with going through some of the recommendations here. I, I wasn't going to go through all the, all the capital items, Mike, in detail. Mm -hmm. um, unless the members feel compelled, I was going to actually go to Diane and then Nancy okay. and then Nick and see what comes ahead. Diane. So this is a tough year. And as you, if you've watched us month to month, you'll see that we've been questioning certain line items, expenses like office supplies, medical supplies. There's a lot of increases because things cost more. We're all experiencing it in personal life as well. So what this town in the past we've seen is they expect services. <coughs> services meaning board of ed, educating the children. Fire and police keeping the, ta the town safe and medical responses. So the struggle we have in order to keep all of this up with the spending and the increased costs that we're all facing, not just towns personally, we're all facing it, is going to be a challenge. And there's a lot of, a lot of that in this budget. And this is going to be a challenge. And whatever we, we send, to you guys, you, you, you guys are going to be the voice of what you want to see. 
and it's been a long time since we've had to do something like this and we did it was a while back um, we were cutting like leaf. we cut the leaf pickup I think that's what it was right it was like it was the leaf pickup right? right so that was one of the things that got cut and one of the times it didn't pass and then Mike got inundated with calls and we had to bring it back or it was brought back in it you know so there's an example so I I agree with with what Mike said I'm just giving it a different twist on it that we've been asking the same questions office supply any supplies building maintenance and repair right Nancy you and I have been asking mm -hmm. about the same things and this is definitely going to be a challenge I, I would point out um, I asked for the mill rates for the town going back they go back to 07 but the mill rate currently is 30.71 that mill rate hasn't changed in five years and in reality it hasn't changed since 2015 when the mill rate was 30.53 there was a couple ups or downs during that period, but really, the mill rate in this town hasn't gone up since 2015. Yeah. So the other day, um, someone called the office and spoke with uh, Valerie, and uh, during the discussion, the resident said, with all these businesses Mike is bringing in, um, we should be able to... Um, we buy more and, and just keep doing more and more. So let me share with you what all those businesses brought in. So we had a grand list growth, I'll, I'll talk net incremental revenue, $1,363,000. That represents development across the town, including the major project I was working on for 225 apartments on Washington Avenue. That now, in these times, is considered development and economic development. But at $1,363,000, we can't bring enough in to offset the loss of revenue plus the escalation factor of inflation. A specific example of inflation, another example, is there's a bridge in town that washed out twice in major rainstorms. It's a public safety hazard. We repaired the bridge. Now the cost of that bridge has gone up from $175,000 to $1.2 million. And I'm being asked if we could appropriate the money to fix that bridge. Because in the next 12 months, it could collapse again. Where are we going to get that money? So we're applying for grants. There's a match. We might be able to marginalize the $1.2 million by getting a state grant, which we think we can get, but still, our portion of that will be $600,000. That's, that's an example of what we're talking about here. Diane, did you finish comments? Yeah, I think I'm pretty All right. Uh, Nancy, um, mm -hmm. why don't you go ahead, but uh, if you don't mind, before you do, I know you sent the, the board some um, some cuts, and I'm sure you're going to want to go over some of those. Well, I, I have I, some introductory comments. No, no, I, I know you do. I just want to say something first, that's all. Sure, go ahead. Um, I'm just going to ask that when you do get to your spreadsheet, if you wouldn't sort of work backwards and start with the big dollars and, and work your way down, if you don't mind. Sure. Well, Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, so I, I'd just like to say, um, first of all, uh, thank you to the chairman for uh, providing uh, an overview of not only the budget, but also uh, the, the revenue sources and, provide, and Mr. Frieda for providing some updates on uh, some of our important sources of revenue. Uh, I, I do think that I've read about um, the potential for ECS uh, uh, potentially increasing even more uh, in, in the newspaper. But uh, I'd like to provide a context uh, as well as my recommendations uh, for, for some changes, and, but as I said, I'd like to first thank both the chair, the chair for his bipartisan leadership. Um, this year, he has specifically requested input from all members of the Board of Finance, and I think that that's, that's something that I personally uh, really appreciate, and I think that goes a long way towards um, building a, a really, really unified team here. Uh, as the, as the chair mentioned, the first version of the budget, including the fully loaded, uh, Mike, is this an accurate description, the wish list from every single department uh, that uh, are, is ultimately presented at the, uh, at the workshops, 
as, as Tim mentioned, that resulted in a total budget of $124.6 million, which is an increase of $8.6 million, or 7.4%, over the current budget, which is $116 million. One thing that I'd like to point out is uh, that if we proceeded with that very first version of the budget, because there are lots of people asking, why do you need to cut it at all? <laughs> if we proceeded with that first version of the budget, given our revenue sources, which some are actually uh, lower this year than last year, the mill rate would have jumped from 30.71 all the way up to 33.62. So that's a 2.91 mills jump. And for the average homeowner, let's say you have a home that's uh, uh, that is uh, valued at three hundred thousand dollars, that would represent about an eight hundred and seventy-three uh, dollar increase in your taxes uh, for for a given year. So uh, I think that that's something to, to bear in mind. And so, as as everyone has mentioned, we are at this crossroads where we are dealing with inflation as well as revenue from federal and state funding that has been depleted. But our working class community still cannot bear the financial burden of a very large tax increase. So I think we have to balance all of these different factors and ultimately be able to present a budget with uh, what we consider to be a reasonable mill rate. Uh, another thing that I'd like to point out is in our budget on page no, uh, 39, they do lump together town capital and contingency as one number, which is referred to as ton, uh, town, and then a separate number for BOE. I'd like to tease that out for, for the illustrative purposes. So in terms of the increase in the first version of the budget, that is going from 116 up to the 124.6, uh, that, that particular $8.6 million increase, the relative contributions from the four parts of the budget are town, 47%, BOE, 20%, capital was about 32.4%, and contingency didn't change. So I'm going to consider that to be a zero change, or a zero contribution. The second version of the budget that we're dealing with this evening, and we refer to that as the, the March 15th version, reflects the list of declinations that were generated uh, during the Republican caucus with some input from, from the uh, Democrats. And this budget total is $121.9 million. And that's a reduction of $2.7 million, or 2.1%, from the first version of the budget. And again, if we went forward with this, this would represent a mill rate of 32.79 mills, which is a 2.08 mills increase over the current mill rate, or again, about $624 for the average household. Nancy, if I could, you know, I got an email from Gary, the average assessed home in North Haven is 210. Is that assessed or appraised? Well, we only use the assessment. No, the appraisal so doesn't, doesn't matter. So the answer to the 300,000 you mentioned is the gross value. Gross value. Yeah. And then you take 70 right. so, yeah. so at this budget right here, it's about a 350 to $380 increase per household based on that, roughly. Mm -hmm. So the 300,000 is really too tight. Again, this will, yeah. this will vary yeah. tremendously yeah. In, yeah. in our town. There are, ten, there are some houses that are $150,000 oh, and no, some yeah. that are course. well over. Right. Right. Uh, but again, the, the reason that I gave you that relative contribution from the four parts of the budget to the increase to the very first version of the budget is that one would assume that the same proportions that led to the increase to the budget would be the guide for the reductions. And in fact, going from the first version of the budget to the second version of the budget, the town, meaning just the town's operating budget, actually only uh, shared a point. 1.5% uh, decrease. The BOE about 9.4% and capital was the lion's share of the reductions at 90.5%. So I think it is very important to make these distinctions because it's my recommendation that we continue to make cuts to the budget, focusing primarily on reducing the town operating budget. Uh, the, the town side of the budget, exclusive of capital and contingency, 
has had a, a very uh, a, a wildly varied uh, percentage increase over the last 10 years. But if you just look at the last four years, it's been 6.6%. Four point four percent, four point one percent, five point nine percent. So the starting point currently on the town side of the budget is a seven point four percent increase, and I think that that's a little bit too high. Um, so before we delve into the expenditure line items, I'd like to make a, a request that ultimately we we do go through the declinations because I would love to be able to know which were cuts and which are uh, capital expenditures that are paid for uh, using ARPA funds. But first, I, I'd like to just ask a couple of questions of my colleagues here. Um, it, and I think I know the answer. Is anyone comfortable going to the public hearing with a 2.08 million dollars? <coughs> or is everyone in agreement that, that I, they I, feel as though we should reduce this? I, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Sure. So first off, I think that you know every, the whole town knows that we're, we're faced with a really tough environment. The mm -hmm. three major buckets: grant reductions, inflation, and contractual obligations such as union contracts have, have kind of put us in this position. We've also enjoyed you know five to seven years of of virtually zero tax increases, which I don't know a town in, in our in, in our state that has. Been, been managed in, in, in that manner. Um, so uh, lots of um, gratitude for the way that this town has been managed. I think that when we're faced with a three mil increase, uh, we're, we're looking at discretionary versus non-discretionary spend items. And what are you gonna cut first? It's gonna be those discretionary items such as capital. Um, from sitting, you know, this is my, my first year, um, involved in the Board of Finance and sitting through the, the, the discussions, it's clear that all the, all the leaders of each department were very thoughtful, uh, very conscious of the position that, that, that we're in, and it didn't seem like any of the uh, increases were radical or, or exorbitant. And uh, I think that inflation is, is, a big, is a big topic here, and we can't you know, un undermine uh, it, its impact. It's, it's impacted our pockets. Um, it, it, it's impacted our daily lives, and, and I think that while no one's going to like going forward with a with a two percent, uh, uh, a two mil increase, I should say, um, I, I think that rather than you know nickel and diming de minimis budget amounts, um, I, I I think we need to put it in the the, the citizens of this town's hands, um, let them make the, the the decision for for where we land. And that if we need to make tough decisions, we have to make tough decisions as a town. But I don't think there's any department where we could, where, where we would want to start uh, determining what they reduce at this point. And I think we've we've taken out, you know, most of what is the low hanging fruit that I would consider uh, discretionary items. Thank you, Nick. Uh, did other members want to talk? Uh, respond to Nancy's comment or question? Mike, Mike, maybe Mike does have one. Uh, so, Nancy, to answer your question, mm -hmm. out of everybody in this room, there's only one person on the hot seat, and that's me, because I have to, I present the budget, and I'm prepared to go to the citizens. Whatever we decide tonight, mm -hmm. I'm prepared to go to the citizens and present this budget. And I will do it in such a personal way to our citizens, because they know me well enough to, by now to know, to say, ladies and gentlemen, these are the problems we're faced with. The future is going to be this, but right now, I'm going to rely on you to tell me what you'd like to do. I'm prepared to do that, mm -hmm. because I have to present the budget. Nobody else here. But we have to decide on the budget. We have to decide, but whatever it ends up to be, yes. if it ended up to be 2.08, which I, I think it's going to get less tonight, if it ended up to be that, I'm prepared to go to the public and try to rationalize it and talk about police, fire, education, services. We talked about leaf collection earlier. That service has gone through the roof in terms of cost. So in the end, in this form of government, I'm the guy that presents it, and the public tells us what they want to do about it.
I, I guess, Nancy, just to repeat something Nick already said, um, mm -hmm. we haven't had a tax increase in seven or eight years. Um, two mills is a, is a sizable number. Um, you might argue we should have had a tax increase last year or the year before, but we didn't. Um, and, you know, listen, a million bucks, is which isn't going to make or break this budget, was the extra money, which which probably was mistakenly mistake on the budget in the first place, right? Um, you know, so, I mean, you know, we can talk about some cuts, um, but I think ultimately, whether it's 2.1, 2, 1, 9, 1, 8, whatever we come up with when, when this when this night's over, I think the residents have to decide. If, if they taste say no, come May, well then, we're going to have to go back to the town with the cooperation of the department heads and, and get some additional cuts. Um, but that's inevitable, inevitably, sorry, going to involve bodies and services. I guess the, the reason that I'm asking this question is that if you look, look at the list of declinations, it is it is all capital, basically. The, the personnel changes, as you say, it's zero impact on the budget. And the, the town has basically, the town operating budget has not been altered at all. So I, I guess I was a little bit perplexed when I got this list of declinations uh, that it didn't reflect any uh, cuts on the, on the town operating budget. And so I, I wasn't quite sure whether the members wanted to make any cuts on the town side. So let me explain, Nancy, that because um, you offered the percentages earlier. But when mm -hmm. we look at the capital that was cut, mm -hmm. it's all on the town side. And by cutting police cars and some of the fire equipment that I noticed has just been cut, these, are, these have an adverse effect on the town. So to cut capital and then cut town resources, the sum of one plus one is more than two. That's, that can be really devastating on, on services. Public works, we can make an argument that there every day that people see public works, whether it's trash pickup, sanitation pickup, snow plowing, parks, recreation, fields, they got basically nothing here, wiped out on the capital. So I can make a strong argument that by eliminating capital, we're hurting the town resources, the people. So that's, that's are, are you saying it. that all of the things listed here are cut, no, or they're being paid for with our cut? No, what we, we look at public works, the, yeah. some of the things they wanted, uh -huh. that, that's a fraction of what they asked for if you look at this budget dated March 15th. Right. None of that's being funded by our. So uh, obviously the, the um, 95 gallon uh, pails has been cut as it has you know, for several years in a row, but the last two items for public works, the, the pickup with the plow and the 30 fun, 30, 3 quarter ton with the rack body lift gate, I had suggested that perhaps we could use uh, MRSA waivers to actually pay for those. We're going to try. Okay. But, but there's no guarantee, though. So, so there's a, still a potential that awesome. they could get those, and they're not necessarily cut. But I, I would greatly appreciate it if we could go through this list so I have a sense for what's cut versus what's paid for with ARPA, if you wouldn't mind. Well, I, I have a bunch of notes here, and we did work with Ingrid and and Mr. Monaco, who also worked with department heads and Mike, I don't have a specific list for you, Nancy. My understanding is these are all cuts. Uh, I don't know that I could name one. I'd actually, I really would have to almost ask Mike or Ingrid yeah. that that's ARPA related. Um, I'll look at my notes. They're not perfect, but I'll look at them. I can tell you, looking at this list, none of this mm -hmm. is ARPA. These are, these are just firm cuts all the way across the board. Mm -hmm. None of this is getting transferred. The, the community place. services senior center buses is no. definitely no? no. No. So you're just cutting those. We're cutting them. First of all, oh. we can't get them. We're, we're, I think we're still two years out. So what I'm trying to do on this is work with the Green Bay Haven Transit District to see if we can replicate that service by using their buses and then just pay a fee. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's not our. Originally, though, it had intended to be. And, and the fire administrative vehicle, again, I'm just going off of the list that you gave us back in October that says fire administrative support vehicles, $80,000. So I assume that was one last year and one this year. Yeah. And the fire extrication, sorry, yeah. fire extrication equipment is also listed. Hopefully you can apply, apply for a grant for that from somewhere. 
a yeah. safer grant or whatever it is. And we have Lynn Sadowski, who I work closely with. Yeah. She's, mm -hmm. she's scouring the yeah. grant process. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. She is tired yeah. of I, I had a note from Richie which said, you know, we would try and look into the special funds account. I don't know if you meant, I, I'm assuming you meant next year mm -hmm. uh, for that item, Nancy. Okay. That <clears throat> and, and again, police cruisers we have under public safety, police cruisers, $195,000 of ARPA. So again, I wasn't sure whether that's just last year or last year plus this year. Uh, that was last year. Yeah, it was last year. Okay. So the $195,000 was last year. So right. what we're proposing for this year is just purchasing one? That's right. I yes. believe so, yes. Okay. So one. Got it. And then the, the light bar that's two down from that, we'll go with that. Just one. For 30000 Correct. Um, and the firearms is just being cut? If you remember, that was an upgrade from, to what they have currently. They wanted to get a new model. Yeah. That's a cut unless... Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was postponed. Right. Oh, okay. It was postponed. That's what they were due. I don't know that they were due. I just the, think he the, wanted the to upgrade. The body armor was due, I recall. No, I think I remember that the firearms was due as well. But okay. All right, so as far as you can tell, everything in this list, this capital, Mike, unless you tell me otherwise, is being cut, with the exception of the potential for two public works vehicles that might get paid for with waivers. Yeah, I think that's an accurate summarization. I mean, I'll double check that, but, you know, I've been, this is what I do every day, folks. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, this Board of Finance comes here once a month. I do this every day. Right. So looking at this quick glance here, I don't see anything. Uh, here that is going to ARPA, uh, but I will double check it. But Nancy, I think this, let's say that I'm mistaken. Anything here that is ARPA is going to be negligible. So, but looking at this, I don't see it. Okay. And, and it would be helpful, the, the sheet that you gave us back in October that gives the breakdown of ARPA, if you, if you could update that, that would be great. Hmm. But I think at the same time, you, you, you'll always uh, be searching for alternative sources for um, to acquire these items that uh, the department has uh, requested and that the town needs. So, from it, it, it's to me, it's helpful that they're coming out of uh, of a of a budget that started out being totally unacceptable to the public, and then now. Um, um, the, the bottom line becomes more reasonable. Relatively speaking, of course. Still have the floor. I still have the floor. Okay. Uh, so I, I think that was my, my main concern was really just to go through the list of declinations and get a sense for which of these were cuts versus which were uh, which were being paid for with uh, using ARPA funds. And again, this still represents capital requests as opposed to town operating uh, expenditures. Um, so I still think that a 7.4 percent increase on the town operating budget is, is still a little bit on the high side um, and might be very difficult to uh, you know I think that present convincing. it is it, uh, unfortunate this year if we were able to keep the debt level and we didn't have to continue to pay now that debt is escalated as I mentioned on the middle school the police department fire departments if we're able to take that debt out which we can um, that would have dropped us uh, if we had a more robust market in the stock market, we wouldn't have had the pension arc increase and required contribution and, um, and health insurance. If you added up the debt service that is related to education and you compared that to the debt service that includes the fire department renovation, the new police department, um, as well as uh, 
the, the annual yeah. paving. Mm -hmm. How do those two compare? Well, you know, I'll just give you a, a, an overview in terms of the numbers. So the, uh, the middle school cost us after the reimbursement, let's say about $49 million. Mm -hmm. The fire departments cost us, and now they're 10 years old, um, $9,247,000. And the police department was anywhere from 16 to $18 million. So the largest debt that the town took out was on the, was on the new middle school. Mm -hmm. And then on, on the town side, I, I guess I'm trying to get a sense for the debt uh, for on, on the town yeah, side. I'd have to check to see what those percentages versus, are. Versus, uh, oh. But I think the two drivers are the middle school and the police department this year. Mm -hmm. Whatever those percentages are, I'd have to go back and analyze the debt and then try to compute that. And then they have $2 million every year for paving, right? Uh, this year was 2.6. 2.6, right. pardon me, yes. yes. And so that's going to be the cost going forward. I wasn't sure whether that was going I to be I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least for this coming year, if we decide to pay, if it's going to be about 2.6. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to go through your spreadsheet now? So, sure. I, I guess I, I can just ask if there was any reason that the, the things that I provided in advance were not included in the declination, or did you just want to save it for the meeting? I guess you want to save for the meeting. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so then I won't uh, focus on capital, uh, except for one thing that I, I think I have mentioned before, which is it seems to me a redundancy, which is uh, recreation. Uh, there's a full maintenance and repair capital request that I believe also reflects. Uh, a budgeted line item, which is pool equipment and maintenance of $30,000 in the recreation budget. All right, you're gonna, you gotta uh, slow down. Where are you on sure. your sheet here? Okay. Yeah. The, fourth, the fourth line in capital, the bottom fourth line in the capital. So it's page two of your sheet. So this I have it. Yes. Give me just your numbers, Nancy, the way you designated the numbers. It's, not, it's 38, right? Number it's, 38. It's yes, the, 38, exactly. So, so this is obviously a capital request for recreation, which is the one, two, three, fourth one down. And the point is uh, that this particular capital request seems redundant to me because we already have a line item for recreation called pool maintenance and repair, which is thirty thousand dollars. I can answer to that budget. I can answer to that. So I did sure. went ahead and I did an audit on that line because it was over in last month's expense budget report. Yeah. Um, there was eighteen thousand dollars of maintenance that we had we reclassed to capital. So if you see this month's uh, expense budget, you'll see that change, which uh, that brought it yes. to ninety percent spent. Mm -hmm. And it brought the line on recreation, which is on page 16 of your expense budget report, mm -hmm. to 93 percent. But that's that's for the current fiscal year. Correct? Because this was for pool equipment, yeah. and the other expenses were specifically for pool maintenance. Okay, so I'm going to assume that there, there, there was some problem in this current fiscal year, and in order to deal with the expense of that problem, it had to be carved out of the budget and put into some sort of capital request. Is that what you're saying? No, As they, opposed they to were lumping the both of the expenses. The equipment, uh -huh. we did have some um, repairs that we had to make, mm -hmm. uh, but there was uh, pool equipment lumped with. I'm trying to pull my capital here. So if I could. With maintenance. So I think what you just said was <clears throat> in the current year, not. The item Nancy was talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. We did a reclass, and that line item in the current year is 90% expense. Yes. The maintenance was lumped in with the equipment. So okay. we did an audit on that line, and we reclassed the maintenance to the capital, and we left the equipment. And both lines are basically spent right now. It's just the way they were carrying. It was carrying at zero last month, but I went to analyze that line. 
I've okay, been going so, to different so in, lines. In the, in the proposed budget, if you turn to page 35, which is Recreation Division of Community Services, you will now see that there are two separate lines, pool chemicals and supplies, and a separate line, pool equipment and maintenance. And my point is that the line item pool equipment and maintenance seems redundant compared to an additional capital line for the next fiscal year, not the current fiscal year, but mm -hmm. the next fiscal year, because again, I, I, I'm not assuming that the same problem we're experiencing in this month will experience again right. next year. Right, the, the, the problems that we're seeing this year is in the pool equipment line, but the maintenance of it every year is in capital. Because right, yeah. Now, it's my understanding, uh, based on experience, which someone has, someone has here, um, is that uh, the, the, the pool used to shut down every summer for a, a, a week or two. Is it summer? Or it, it, it shuts down at some point. Yeah. And a, a total reconditioning is done, and some major repairs occurred. And that's, that is usually connected with that capital line. So it's not the same as the ongoing maintenance and equipment that occurs throughout the year as the pool operates. It, it has to do with, 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 the, uh, uh, with the once a year uh, shutdown, makeover, and uh, major repair uh, of, uh, of the pool itself. And I think we've cut that a couple years. We did, we, did, we did eliminate it. It was happening every year, and then uh, a, a couple years that wasn't present. And so to see it back here, I think it, it's, it's just as important as, uh, as, uh, as maintaining any piece of infrastructure we have. That's, so I, I, I knew it as something, even though it has a, the same title, uh, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a different aspect, a different uh, uh, level of, uh, of work. So does the pool, the, the pool maintenance it's different from the budget line that's in total recreation on page 16, which is uh, pool equipment. And that has increased this year a lot because of uh, chemicals right. and yeah. other things that we have to maintain the pool with. All right, so the, the chairman has asked that I go through this uh, in descending order, starting with some of the bigger reductions. So. Um, I guess on page 22 in the finance department, uh, personnel part time. Uh, well, your biggest item is $100,000 in contractual obligations. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I can start with that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, personnel policy, which is on page 25. Uh, I'm recommend a, a $100,000 reduction from $300,000 down to $200,000. And again, uh, the fire department, as was mentioned, is the only remaining expired uh, collective bargaining agreement. And reduction in contractual obligations is intended to offset the increase that is already built into the fire department salaries in the proposed budget in anticipation of the negotiated fire department CBA. So we really shouldn't be double counting. Uh, most departments, uh, you have a flat salary for several years until the CBA is renegotiated. And then once it's renegotiated, then you get back pay for all of those years that are covered by the collective bargaining agreement. For some reason, the fire department has been given the opportunity to actually bump up their salaries for full-time uh, firefighters in anticipation of signing this collective bargaining agreement. If that's going to be the case, that's fine, but then we shouldn't also be contributing in this current fiscal year uh, $300,000 to, um, to the contractual obligations. <coughs> Any thoughts? Uh, I guess what I know is that, yes, I believe there is still one contract open. Um, I'm not clear if the fire, oh, sorry, I'm not clear if the police contract is fully closed out or not, if that's just, if that's just an agreement. Um, you know, you're correct. This line item is uh, in there to uh, represent the cost of unclosed contracts. Uh, right. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. When you're done. Uh, police, it's, it's been settled, but it hasn't been fully closed, and that's why we have left some okay. additional funds So there's there. a couple open items you're saying? Yes. 
per their contract. Okay. But all the contractual obligations have been paid. Yes. Right. Each year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what are people's thoughts about this? Should this be something we say yes to? Uh, start thinking about it? I think it's something to think about, Nancy. Um, you know, uh, I did talk to Richie about it. He was comfortable with the number. Um, but I think it's open for conversation. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was told that uh, that number represents um, some other affiliated costs with the unsettled fire contract. And so the, it is true that uh, the, the labor line shows um, the, the figure there reflects a, a settled contract, but there are other associated benefits and other uh, line items within the fire department that uh, may add up to a, a figure as high as three hundred thousand, because remember that's that is a that's a settlement uh, of um, that's three years in arrears, so that's that's seven and a half percent. That's three years worth of. Uh, but we of contribute figures. into it every year. What? Right. I, I don't so know. So each if year a that it's affected, it has a contractual obligation line that. Yeah, I know, but the third year, it's it, it's compounded by what what ha hasn't occurred, what what never was. Um, I don't think it's a dedicated fund years. for that, Nancy. If that's what you're saying. I'm sorry. I don't think there's a dedicated fund for that. If that's what you're saying. I think the increase comes totally out of the line the current year's budget. No. Can can anyone else weigh in on this? As I, as I understand it. Once the <coughs> CBA is signed, that all of the back pay comes from contractual obligations. And that is the sum total of over several years in a row, right? So, so the back pay comes from contractual obligations. Yes. But the new raise goes into the, the uh, full time line. And if it's a three year uh, back pay that's out of contractual obligations, to Michael's point, it's 7.5% more in salaries. Yes, so that's that's the salary line on it. That has nothing to do with, with this uh, item within I think what I'm saying, Mike, and maybe Ingrid can help us or maybe she's looking to it, I, I was not of the understanding that when we put this line in the budget, if let's say it goes unexpended anyway, or just hypothetically, right? Mm -hmm. I was not under the understanding that we set that money aside somewhere. It gets used and transferred at the end of the year amongst the transfers. And so it was my understanding that if you settle a multi-year contract, like say a three-year fire contract, that it all comes out of the contractual obligations in that current year's budget. There's no pool of money right. that may have built up in prior years that we can draw from. That was my understanding. I could be wrong, but that's what I thought. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. Right. So it comes out of that line. Right. It comes out of the line. Yes. Right. Right. So look, the question on the table is, you know, the hundred thousand dollars that Sanders. I think it's open for discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a hundred thousand, but maybe there's somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's take that one under consideration. Sure. Uh, the let's see. The next biggest one is, uh, as Wait. I mentioned, on page 22 in the finance department personnel part time. Uh, again, my position is since we fill the two senior positions, meaning Mr. Monaco as the director of procurement and administration and uh, uh, Ingrid as the uh, comptroller, that we should reduce the finance department's reliance on part-time help. Now, I certainly understand following Mr. Swankowski's death, there was an immediate need for not just part-time help, but overtime and you know, lots of assistance. But I think previously we've spent like 33,000 and 66,000. We're currently at uh, 67,000 year to date. So I, I think that the, uh, this number could certainly be reduced. It was, I think it's been uh, budgeted at like 114 this year uh, and, and I believe could be reduced. It's, uh, it's proposed at $169,975 for four personnel uh, on a part-time basis. That, that seems like a lot to me. Well, my understanding for number one is they're having trouble hiring full-time down there. Um, but moreover, I don't understand where the cut comes from. We still need the bodies, and so I'm not sure if you cut the part-timers. Now we have less staff. 
you're I saying replace them with full-time staff. I'm not sure where the savings is. I, I, I guess I'm saying reduce the number of hours because it, it seems like there's this has got to be a lot of hours of part-time help. Would you like to comment? I think you're there. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm there every day. So sure. we have multiple grants that we have gotten uh, that our head bookkeeper, she's keeping track of that. So as we get more grants, there's a lot more paperwork that we have to uh, account for. Um, there has been uh, software upgrades, so um, there's tremendous amount of work that we have added to our department. Um, we have retires, retirees that we will need to train people to do their jobs, and they are working part-time to train new people uh, that are coming in. And uh, we have just tremendous amount of Would you like to talk about the work that has to be done down there in dealing with the retirees on medical insurance and COVID increases and all that, and Social Security? So that, she is actually part-time now, the oldest OPEB reports and uh, the actuaries, she's part-time. She is actually training our current payroll uh, and then she will be retiring. So there's a lot of training. We also did not have succession plans. When somebody retired, nobody would be able to take their work, so we are creating a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I believe you're at least one full body uh, behind. You're, you're, miss you're missing uh, someone who, who you, definitely, yes. you, you desperately need. We too. just lost our senior clerk too. Uh, we don't have yeah, a senior so that's, clerk. So that's why that line is underexpended at the moment in our on our in our expense report mm -hmm. because it's the positions are not fully filled. Right. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just trying to understand what what is new. Uh, you know, we we've had grants for years. We've had software upgrades for year, uh, software upgrades for years. Um, I, I think that certainly we're all missing Mr. Schwinkowski, who I think did the job of you know, at least four people. But um, I, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to understand how, when, now that we've filled these two senior positions, I would think that you know more hands make light work, and that hasn't been the case. It's just more hands. <laughs> well, uh, look, my understanding is <clears throat> we've had some retirements. Uh huh. We've been fortunate that some of those retirees have come back to work part-time mm -hmm. uh, for the town. And although we have more hands in the, in the form of Mr. Monaco, mm -hmm. um, having spoken to him, he's not there per se doing the regular day-to-day -day work. He ha obviously had a big hand in putting his budget together. But he's working on a lot of other things that, you know, for years, um, you know, uh, probably needed some attention by the town. I mean, if you go back in time, there always was two senior people in the finance department. Um, but we got away for years with with just one. And and Richie does more than just, you know, the accounting end, as I think we all know. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, and I, I think you mentioned before the, the police chief's request for the ninth uh, full-time dispatcher. I don't think that ever made it into the budget. He, he kind of presented it at the workshop, but it wasn't really in the initial budget. And so we're, we're just going to scratch that, correct? Correct. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, you got 50000 for the part-time fire inspector. Sure. Um, so I think that the, the fire department has gone through a, a, a pretty big turnover in the last year where uh, both of the deputy chiefs uh, have, have gone on to other positions as well as the fire inspector. And so the, the fire chief had to hire a new uh, deputy chief of operations as well as most recently a new deputy chief who will be the deputy fire marshal and replace the fire uh, inspector. But now all of those positions have been filled so I, I feel as though that is the full complement of a fire marshal department, if you also include you know, the secretary. And so between the chief, who is the fire marshal, the deputy fire marshal, and a full-time, what used to be called a consultant, is now called a fire inspector, I would think that 
that would be sufficient in order to actually do both the standard fire inspections of existing facilities as well as the planned reviews of uh, um, renovated or new facilities. And again, the, the chief presented this as a cost neutral addition. And then later, I believe he, he changed that and, and acknowledged that, of course, it's an expense to add an additional uh, part-time person and that the, the pie, if you will, of revenue that would come from the plan review is a fixed pie. It's not that if we hire more people, we can bring in more revenue. It really is just a question of dispersing more work across you know, more people. And so my, my feeling is that I, I, I don't exactly understand why, why this is necessary. And um, so, so that's why I, I had suggested reducing this particular line item by $50,000. You know, I was there as you were for the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, I can't recall what he said word for word, but my recollection was he's got a big backlog of work. And while he is a certified fire marshal, um, I think what he said was, you know, he's got a wide range of duties, and while he does do some inspections, I, I, you know, I think that, you know, he had too much to do, I think, to be doing these inspections. I, I did see this cut that you suggested, Nancy, and, and my reaction was, I would be personally reluctant to cut it without having some further conversation with the, with the chief, uh, as to just how desperately he needs this this position. I mean, this is an er, I, this is one of those areas that, you know, could directly affect the health and welfare of the residents of the town. Um, I think Paul has to manage his department, obviously, um, to dollars and to safety, because that's obviously what his role is. Mm -hmm. um, but I would be a little reticent to, to move this item without input from the chief. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any thoughts about this? I think it's a fair comment, Nancy. I mean, I, I, I don't think we have enough background to make that call right here, as, as our chairman said. Um, so let's just take it under advisement. Mm -hmm. And I, I work with Paul every day. I see what he goes through. I know his other responsibilities. He's become a leader in the region with all the other fire chiefs on the 911 emergency dispatch system. So, you know, I, I'd be reluctant to take this out. Hmm. Well, I, I know that I did ask him during the workshop if this position has already been filled, and he said no at the time. Is that still the case? So say again, I'm, I'm not sure I could. Yeah. How could he fill the position that he's requesting? Well, I, I asked that only because I happened to see a picture <clears throat> of someone in our local newspaper <clears throat> who is being presented as a, a, someone who was a former firefighter who's retired, who has now been uh, uh, listed as a fire inspector. So I, that's why I'm wondering if... Oh, it's David O'Bear, Nancy's talking about David O'Bear. Mm -hmm. so. so he's already working in this capacity? Yes, part-time. Part part-time, part yes. Okay. So that's another position that's been created without benefit of a budget referendum. Okay. So I guess taking under advisement. Um, let's see, what else do we want to do? Um, <clears throat> building maintenance, repair, and supplies uh, for the police department. Uh, again, I think that this is something that was very perplexing when the police chief presented this. He said that uh, $30,000 was added onto this particular line item for munis changes in police payroll. Does that did. sound familiar? Yes. Well, Ingrid could probably explain this better than I could. I do remember the conversation, <laughs> but let Ingrid. Ingrid yes. Yeah. So we are going through major updates. Munis have not been updated in 10 years to the point that we were not getting supported, support at all from anything that was happening in our software. Mm -hmm. um, it, this has to happen in payroll system. We are manually doing a lot of work. They have to spend hours and hours uh, filling out papers and inputting them in the computer. And uh, per state mandate, um, they had asked us that we, our payroll system needs to be updated. Mm -hmm. So this is only for the police department. That would be this 
updated. Other departments were working with them in updating one by one. So they still have to fill out paper, or are they going to? No, it will be everything electronically, yes. Right. Yes, they're spending a lot, yes. So Same is thing this with increase different from the, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, IT already have, reflects a minus increase right. from 40 to 80. That was the financial uh, up the upgrade that we did this year yeah. from 10 years of not being upgraded. We were in a very, very old version of Munis, which this would, uh, now with all the implementation that, yes. Sorry, I didn't try to mean, sure. so it sounds like the second item <clears throat> was an upgrade, normal upgrade to like any. Mm -hmm. Whereas the police is an enhancement where we're getting electronic for payroll purposes. payroll as opposed to filling out papers. What that's my yes, main, which every department thing. will need to get upgraded. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so we're going to keep that in that particular line item: building maintenance, repair, and supplies. Because I thought there was some discussion of um, put it somewhere. But maybe it doesn't a, belong there, but the dollars are going to be there. there. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, you got um, the Volunteer Association's 28,000. Uh, okay. That was your cut, yeah. sorry. Yes, Volunteer Association. Uh, again, this is uh, for the fire department once again. Um, I'd like to reduce this from 33,000 down to 5,000. And this is simply their contributions towards joining various volunteer associations. This is not uh, actually um, in any way paying for any costs associated with our uh, our fire volunteers. Um, and, I think and these I, are expenses, right, that he, he budgets for certain expenses, reimbursable type expenses, right? Yes. It, it, uh, they, it, it seems they, a little high to me, Nancy. I'll give you that. Uh, again, previously we spent 500 <coughs> and at, at most 2,500. So, and this year, year to date, zero. So to be budgeting $33,000 seems... Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's some room there for movement. Okay. But uh, just to add a note, we are currently doing an audit on that line because it mm -hmm. was zero, but that's not the real number year to date. They were in other lines. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Mis they, they were, were a misclass. class, class yes. Line. But then again, yes, it's ah, not that okay. high. I can well, give you an update. Okay, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Uh, okay, I guess we're down to the 10, no, 15,000. Here we go. Um, Telephone services uh, under central supply on page 24 uh, reduced from 330,000 to 315. Again, uh, some some insight about this uh, would, would be helpful. Previously, we spent 273,000 and 308,000. Uh, thus far this year, we've spent 152,000. So uh, I don't really have a sense is the cost here dictated by a contract? Is there some overages that uh, come at towards the end of the year. It's, it's not. It's not entirely clear how we get up to this enormous number. There was some. Uh, there was. Richie said there was some damage equipment. At Ingrid, does that make sense? I'll have to that look ring a bell? into this when I. Okay. But I think we can work with that. Okay. The fifteen thousand. Sure. Think. Which one is that? Telephone services. Uh, I think we can Nancy, if you don't mind, you had twenty thousand unemployment. Yep. Unemployment. Uh, again, this is something that I noticed in, in the current um, uh, budget reports. Uh, I'd like to reduce this from 30,000 down to 10,000. I think, thankfully, uh, we, uh, we have not had to be paying much in uh, unemployment compensation. The problem there with that is that <clears throat> um, we have to pay that ourselves. It's not um, unemployment to pay to the state right. that, that a company does, right? So mm -hmm. this is unemployment that we have to pay directly. Right. So ra rather than, and I don't really know how unemployment works, maybe Ingrid can tell me, but I assume that when you pay unemployment, you pay a, a more predictable tax or levy, as opposed to this, it's it's direct pay. So it's got to be one of those lines that's more difficult to, to budget because it could go up and down uh, based, obviously, on the unemployment levels of town is. Right. And, and I guess that's that's where Mr. Frieda could probably provide some insight. I think when we were in the midst of the pandemic, um, I think that there were some issues in which we saw a pretty substantial spike in this particular line item. But, but this year, we really have been very fortunate. And I agree with you, we should not drain this down to zero. But I think going from 30 down to 10,000 might make sense. 
So that's a possibility. I think it's a possibility. I'm just reluctant to commit to 10. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Maybe there's somewhere in between there. It's more of a safety measure? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So reduce it from 30 down to 20 and get the savings of 10? How's that? You know, I'm good with that. I mean, okay. if it ends up next year over 30, over yep. 20, we're going to have to pay it anyway. Yep. Uh, we report to the town meeting if it's over $20,000. So I'm fine with that. Sure. Um, let's see, any other towns? Um, so the, the condo trash pickup, again, I'm sure there's all kinds of subtleties associated with this, but uh, again, just based upon the numbers, the historical numbers, 92,000, 91,000, we've spent 108 this yep. year. Um, it still represents a $20,000 increase if we reduce it down to 115, but it saves us $10,000. That's a wild card line. Yeah. We all know the trash pickup is, is going to go up and up and up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I, I would say, Nancy, that's one that I would be uncomfortable with. Okay. Because the uh, occupancy rates are rising mm -hmm. and the tip fees are rising also. Okay. So, just so, where did we decide on the unemployment con uh, oh. compensation? We thought we might be able to get 10 out of that, right? Or we we're suggesting. Unemployment, uh, reduce it yeah. from 30 to 20, yes, or savings so. of 10. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Okay, so this the condo trash pickup, you said no. Transportation and hauling, again, uh, reducing that from 120 down to 110. Obviously, we can't anticipate Mother Nature, but uh, previously, uh, 109,000 uh, have spent 54,000 this year. We budgeted 170, and I believe that was a remnant from uh, the hurricane and tornado debris hauling costs from 2020 and 2021. So, um, I'm recommending reduce that from 120 to 110 for a savings of ten thousand dollars. We can live with that. It's, it's again, it's, it's uh, we don't know what the storms are going to be. No, absolutely. Uh, so, but ten thousand dollars if it goes over that, I go back to what I just said earlier. We go to the town meeting. We say there would be storms. We report it that way. Right. I'm with the ten thousand dollars. Okay, and okay. and eventually we did receive some FEMA funding, but it didn't help us right. in a given fiscal year. I, I, I completely right. acknowledge that. And um, okay, let's. You got a couple more at ten, Nancy. I, I think that's probably as low as we probably should go. Okay, uh, I think I have um, for the finance office, and think if we can be, you can uh, chime mm. in on this. Uh, Diane's favorite category of office supplies. Uh, reduced from 25000 down to 15000 uh, for savings of 10. Previously spent 4000 11000 have spent 5600 year to date, and you know this would still represent a, a $7,000 increase over the current budget of 8000 Ingrid, this is in finance. Yes. Yes. We are going to be moving next door, so we will need the additional um, funds for that. So office supplies is paying for the move? No, office supplies will be paying for our furniture and things that we will need to be able to move. Oh, okay. I, I didn't understand that that includes furniture. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. You had another one. Um, another medical supplies. Yes. Again, I think I asked about this during our meeting. Um, I recommend reducing this from 69 to 59. Previously, we spent 54, 49,000. We've spent 52 year to date, and I just had a question about whether we're helping them no come with this or not. So, uh, Richie says we're currently at 65, tracking to 75. But okay. coming back to what you met, just mentioned, Nancy, we answered that about no. Yep, concept. absolutely. Yeah, no, you did for sure. Uh, oh, and I think there was one question for technology for the fire department that I think is 15,000. Line 28. Uh, I'm recommending re uh, reducing that from 47,500 to 32,500 uh, for savings of 15,000. Previously, we spent 24,000, 16,000. We've spent about 29,000 to date. And again, my reduction still represents a $5,000 increase over the current budget of 27,500. 
I don't really I know don't what this really item is. I don't know if he has yeah, like a, a line what item. What is what is this for? What is technology? This is technology for the fire department. Right, but like what, for what specific? <laughs> that's what that's would be my question. Is it something in the something that they use at the fire station that tracks something? Is it that I would want to know what that is? Yeah, I can, I, again, I, I'm just going based upon the. the yeah, I would want to know what the technology is on. Sure, that, for that sure. would be helpful. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so we've got a couple things to think about. Um, I think what I'd like to do is, uh, in a moment, not this exact moment, ask for a short recess. But, Mike, do you have any kind of update on the medical? Yes. So, <clears throat> you know, I work closely with the agents on the town side, and uh, we have some good news on this. And the way it works is that there's a 13-month look back on the claims history. So the last two months, we've been able to knock off high months with the back. So the uh, agents have told me that the 7600000 that we have in this budget, we might be able to look at about 350000 to take off of that because the claims history had dropped. We drop off the higher months. So did you, I, want to, did you want to give it one more month and decide on this in April? Well, here's yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt that. I'm sorry. Here's my thought on that. Yes, we could, but it could go either way. So right. my suggestion is since we've had to cut now, we put it in, right? And then add it back if we Well, I thought you were thinking I was thought you were thinking the other way, Mike. I thought you were thinking that we might go down again. Sorry. Um, no, I just wanted to know if if, if 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 this if this amount of reduction was is the correct suggestion. That's all. Well, as at this moment in time, it is. Now keep in mind that the logistics on this, folks. Um, tonight is the night that the Board of Finance is going to put together a resolution, and I go before the public before the next Board of Finance meeting. Okay. So uh, we have an opportunity. To, to take off three hundred fifty thousand dollars, okay, and then we see you know, what happens at the public meeting. Good, and then we still have the April board of finance meeting to make any adjustments, whether it's up or down. Right, Tim. Right. Well, that's what I was thinking. Mike obviously, I think, was thinking the optics of yeah. that. You know, it's better to go down than up, right? I think that's what Mike was thinking. Right. But. So the question is, do we do we take advantage of this now, Michael? The three fifty, or are you suggesting we wait? until April. Um, I, I guess we should put our best foot forward at this time and uh, and get this budget as close to what we believe it sh it'll be in April anyway. So certainly, yes, yeah, so we can make this reduction now and this will, um, I think, take us uh, be below uh, two mils. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Certainly this plus some of the uh, Reductions that uh, Nancy has uh, has proposed here. So yeah, that combination will uh, definitely be a step in the right direction. I want to consider rolling up tempo what we just discussed this year. Uh, yeah, while we while we recess, we yeah. we can we That's can get right. this all together and right. into a, a a motion. Right. Okay. So uh, I'm not sure, actually, I forget if we need a motion for this, but um, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, have a 15 minute recess to reconvene at 8:45. Take a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we'll reconvene at 845.
All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, appreciate the pause. Um, yes. I'm just going to uh, restate, I think, the conversations that we just had and try and sum all this up for everyone in the room and the members. Uh, but in addition to the decrements that were already presented in this evening's package, we are proposing the following reductions. Medical, $350,000. Contingent obligations, $50,000. Fire Department, the Volunteer Associations, 20. Unemployment Comp, 10,000. Transportation and Hauling, 10,000. Mm -hmm. For a total of $440,000 in cuts. Uh, Ingrid and I have been doing the math. Uh, that would bring the town side to 59856429 Ingrid, I did not do the total yet. I'm not sure if you've got a total for us over there. Yes, uh, adding the Board of Education, which is 61,643,954, that totals to 121,583,000. 500 what? 500,000,3. 383. 383. Can we just round it to an even 500,000? <laughs> <laughs> Only Joe. One twenty one five hundred three three. Okay, I got the same number. All right. Um, and what's the mill rate associated with that? Oh, sorry. Uh, that's about a. Um, I have that. Point one four. It's a point one four reduction. It'll get us to. Um, sorry, about one point nine four, Nancy. <laughs> So a total of is it thirty two six five or thirty two? I mean, there's pro I'm probably off a hundredth or so. I, I kind of rounded a little bit, which we don't have to do for this book, but it will get us to uh, point one four less than what's in this book. Oh, we had a new page, didn't we? Sorry. Can we have the new page to make yep. it easy on us? What's on the new page, Nancy? Uh, 3279. And you said it was 0 0.14 less? Yeah. So that's what I calculated to, 3265. Yep, that's it. Okay. All right. Unless there's any further conversation then? The members, do we make a motion for 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 to yeah, accept well, these cuts? Uh, or um, no? we I don't know. We have to. I think we have to pass. I think we just make the resolution on the total on the on the board of ed, the town total, Mike. That's my recollection. Right. Okay. Because we didn't certainly didn't make a, a motion on on the original decrement or the original change list. So. Well, the original change list was reflected in the budget you got. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you think we should make a a, a motion on the the cuts, I'm happy to do that. Um, you want to button things up? No, I, I, I guess that the, the final number will just Yeah, I think the final number the comes cuts. out on the right. Okay. So, so why don't I um, read the resolution, and um, I'll take a uh, motion on that. So resolve that the Board of Finance recommends the public hearing a fiscal year 2023 to 2024 town government budget of $59 eight hundred and fifty six thousand four hundred and twenty nine dollars I think we'll do these separately if you don't mind can I hear a um, you want to second that Nance yes or, or, or you, you made the motion I made the motion yes Nancy, all right Nancy second, second. Yes. all in favor aye. 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 aye my second motion is a resolution that the Board of Finance recommends to the public hearing a fiscal year 2023 2024 <laughs> Board of Education budget of $61,643,954. I'd like a second, please. Second. Second. Could I discuss? You can. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, it's the elephant in the room here. That's, uh, that's, that's why uh, we're over capacity tonight. Um, the the $250,000 uh, proposed reduction uh, is, is it's somewhat of a symbolic cut in the uh, Board of Ed. Um, myself, like everyone on the board, I believe I can speak on behalf of everyone on the board, want a well-funded school system. 
why would we pres present and tolerate a $250,000 reduction in the Board of Ed budget? And simply put, we know in the end what is acceptable or not acceptable to the public, the public, the voting public that has voted in North Haven for the last 30 years. The, now, um, we look at it in an, a very aggregate sense. Um, a a 2.1 mil or a 1.9 mil increase is not going to be well accepted by the public, but if if we didn't include some undesirable costs, some costs that show that we're making sacrifices, including sacrifices uh, in, in, with regard to the education budget, we think there's a greater chance it will fail. So we have to make some tough decisions. If if it goes down, if the if the budget doesn't pass, then new and larger cuts will be made to many departments, including the Board of Ed. That's just the history of how it's happened. Now, that's not it's not a threat. It's not a promise I'm making. Whatever. That's Again, it's based on experience, and it's based on history. So to avoid the budget failing and to avoid larger cuts that will be horrific, maybe, we have to at least show to the public that we're willing to, to, to do difficult things. And, um, you know, so in this case, that this cut is 0.4 of 1%. So here we don't see the glass as 0.4% as, as empty. We see the, the education glass as 99.6% full. So that's, that's, that's all I can say on this. Mr. Friedman, you may or may not agree with, with this perspective. No, I, I see your point, um, but I'm going to make a bold statement here that if the budget doesn't pass, I'm not going to be supporting any additional cuts on the board of it. Very good. So. Very good. Hmm. Uh, if I could just add a little bit to what Mr. Hallahan was saying, again, in terms of context, the $250,000 uh, cut to the increase in the Board of Education budget represents 0.4% of the total budget, meaning $61.9 million. It represents 14.7% of the requested increase of $1.7 million. Now, again, in terms of historical context, the BOE has recorded substantial surpluses during the past three years, $850,000, a million, $700,000, and as I mentioned before, given the fact that they're uh, requesting $384,000 in capital expenditures for next year, I think there's an expe expectation of a surplus again this year. And most importantly, the BOE budget has been approved with no cuts made for the past two years, and three years ago, there was only a $200,000 cut to the increase. And so I, I consider that to be an interesting and uh, important track record to emphasize that this board actually uh, is very pro-education. And I myself has cert have certainly advocated for education for many, many years. Uh, and I think given the much larger reductions in capital, uh, I don't <coughs> think that uh, we necessarily need to be making any cuts to the BOE budget this evening. However, I will reserve any, uh, any future predictions based upon the public hearing and the type of feedback that we get from, from our community, because I think that's ultimately what will dictate what this board does at our uh, April Board of Finance meeting. Thank you. Yeah, and the, the last uh, point I'll make is that this $250,000 cut on a, on a $61 million budget I believe will have no impact on learning. But um, I'm not an expert in that field. That's just <coughs> what I do believe. 
Uh, and I've opposed many cuts in the past and uh, uh, hope that this is the only reduction that is necessary in this budget cycle. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Nancy. Sure. Anything from the other members? If not, I'll call for vote. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> All right. Finally, I'll move the following. <coughs> Excuse me. That a fiscal year 2023-2024 budget recommendation of $121,500,383 be presented to the public hearing to be held on Tuesday, April 4, 2023, with the Board of Education budget to be presented first, beginning at 7 p.m., followed by the town government to begin no later than 8 p.m., with general discussion to follow as may be warranted. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. All right. Once again, Mr. Chairman, I, I want to thank you for the way you've conducted this meeting and for the accommodations and compromises that you've uh, uh, shown this evening. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Uh, public comment. Ms. Buemi. <clears throat> Blossom Drive. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also would like, uh, having come to almost all of these meetings for the past uh, 10 years, I would like to commend you for the way you uh, ran this very important March uh, Board of Finance meeting and uh, your willingness to listen to all members of the board. That is a very refreshing uh, uh, change. And um, I, I commend you for your leadership of this very important board. Um, I just had a question about the uh, revenue uh, budget on page, mm. I'm looking at three fifth, your Board of Finance 315-23 book. Mm. On page um, seven, well, first, I'm very discouraged about that pilot going down 280,000. You know, uh, we we finally, for years, it was in the 400, 500,000. Then it creeped up and up, and we got over a million. I was um, a little discouraged, as I'm sure you were, Mike, that it went down. Um, uh, I'm going to have to talk to Mr. Yaccarino or Mr. Ciccarello about that. Um, but my question is about town revenue general uh, further down on page seven, under town miscellaneous receipts, it is budgeted at 200,000. And you can see that in 21-22, we took in 618. And if you look at your current uh, revenue budget, it is trending over 600,000 again this year. So is there any, uh, maybe there is some specific explanations for why it's doing so strongly, uh, not only last year, but in the current year, and is there possibly any movement, perhaps from 200,000 to 400,000, um, because of this two-year trend on that revenue line? So, as far as this year, Sally, we got 400, let's say 50,000 dollars unexpected that we hadn't budgeted for on the sales tax issue that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so that's this year. We're told because I you know, being involved with CCM and costs and OPM, we're told that don't budget for that this year. Okay. Uh, because the likelihood is you're not going to get it. However, much like the, this past year, we didn't budget for it and we got it. So there could be some upside, but to put it in there may be an artificial increase that we would be struggling against to make if we don't get it. Right. Well, if it if it had been over six hundred thousand just one year, I probably would not have suggested it. Not that two years in a row over six hundred thousand is is a yeah. trend, but it it happened twice. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that out there. But Thank wasn't you. the other six hundred, Mike? Didn't we get some money from the state for storm damage? That wasn't that yeah, so, wasn't so, that the yeah, other so, six hundred? So let's go back because that's a good point. So <coughs> is that where the FEMA seven, went? Yeah, that's where the oh, FEMA went. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> so that was that four hundred fifty-one thousand yeah. 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 salary. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. And I just wanted to make a few points. Uh, one point I wanted to make during your discussion early in the meeting when you were talking about the um, expenditure line uh, in the fire department for medical supplies already being at 30% over, 
I do understand that a lot of that would have to do with inflation. But I also remember at the fire department workshop, the chief stating that Nelson responded to 1,100 911 calls and that the fire department resources were not necessary. So if you have the fire department going to a lot less emergency calls, wouldn't that maybe be counterbalanced by inflation? I just wanted to throw that mm -hmm. out there for, for your thought. Um, next, I wanted to say something about uh, saying that there haven't been any tax increases since 2015. That's a little misleading. Uh, you know, we have revals. Yeah, there was a reval year. Four years. And the last reval, for example, I believe between thir around 35 to 40 percent of our taxpayers um, got a significant increase in their tax obligation because of significant in increases. Um, in the assessed values of their property. So for those people at home who heard here tonight, taxes haven't gone up in t since 2015 and your taxes went up, uh, bec it's because of reval. So I just, um, you, you, you know, the mill rate gets a little fuzzy, uh, uh, reval year, but people certainly have had tax increases. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, next, um, <clears throat> Regarding the CBA contracts, it is my understanding that the fire department is the only one that's open. And um, it expired June 30th of 2022. Isn't that correct? Mr. Hallahan mentioned that it would be three years in arrears. It is. It will not be. Uh, I don't um, think that's the information we got, right? We, we had a special board of selectmen meeting on November 18th of 2019, and we extended I think you're right. The term of the fire department CBA um, to June 30th of 2022, so it's current. And and um, you, I and I asked this last month when I saw that the um, uh, full-time salary increases were already built in to the. Um, fire department salaries and because uh, that's unusual to do it before the passing of a CBA and you said to me Mike um, th that we will be passing uh, a new uh, fire department CBA soon yeah. so that so I just feel very comfortable I'm saying this because of that contractual obligation uh, line discussion you, you all had uh, under personnel policy. Uh, Ms. Barrett suggested reducing it from 300 to 200. I think you compromised at 250. I'm just saying this so that you will have a greater <coughs> comfort le level right. in that because the fire department CBA is not three years in arrears. That's when you get hit hard uh, with the contractual obligation line um, in the personnel policy section when, when there's a lot of arrearage. Um, so um, I just wanted to, to clarify that so that you would feel comfortable with uh, your compromise of a $50,000 cut on that line. I feel very, very comfortable yeah, with it as well. You make a very valid point. Thank you very much. Um, and finally, I want to talk about, well, I, I have one other thing. Uh, I. Uh, I support the uh, $250,000 cut in the Board of Ed budget, and uh, Ms. Baird, as she often does, stole my thunder because I had the data about last year, no change, the year before, no change, and um, the, the year before that, just a $200,000 cut. I think that track record of Board of Education requests versus what they received would be the envy of many Boards of Education in this area. Uh, so. I believe uh, that uh, we have, uh, I am certainly uh, happy that this board has been very supportive of Board of Education in the past uh, few years. So, um, and given the other uh, significant cuts in capital and in the operating budget, I, I am even, uh, I feel even more comfortable with that $250,000 cut in Board of Ed. This is, these are very tough times. Everybody has to kick in. Um, but I do have one other thing to talk about, and, and you all kind of touched on this a little bit when you were talking about the uh, 
fire department, fire inspection, fire investigator line. It used to be for years known as consultant. This year it's in your budget as fire inspector. And, I, you know, I went to the fire commission meeting and I talked to the chief about this line. And I, I'm, I'm supportive of the $50,000 increase. I, well, I said that I was at the, at the commission. I was uh, arguing with the chief um, at the fire commission meeting about whether it was expense neutral, which it is not. And he finally, well, he very easily acknowledged it's not, no expense is expense neutral. Any expense on the expenditure budget has to be supported in some way on the revenue budget. But, um, and Mrs. Barrett again uh, alluded to this. I, I want to read from the chief's um, uh, workshop statement where it says fire inspection, fire investigator, 50,000. We currently funding, current funding of 100,000 doesn't allow the fire department to keep up with ongoing fire and life safety inspections, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, and I quote, this funding will allow an additional part-time fire inve investigator inspector to work within the fire marshal's office. That's kind of the future tense. So if we get this, we will have this. And so when Mrs. Barrett asked, is this position filled, Mr. Chairman, you said, well, it can't be yet. It, you know, it hasn't been passed, but it has been filled. And I was shocked when I saw the citizen and I saw this picture with not only um, Mr. Uh, Siraco, who replaced the longtime consultant, uh, James Etherton, who was first hired in um, October of 2016. He's gone and Mr. Uh, Siraco replaced him as the full-time consultant, no problem, but uh, there's this new uh, fire inspector, new uh, fire inspector, he's already been hired. And this just gets me because it's just another example of how the fire department does not follow the budgetary rules that everybody else has to follow. Everybody always says to me, Sally, why do you pick on the fire department? I'm not picking on them. They don't follow the budgetary rules. They got two firefighters in mid-fiscal year in December of 2018. They promoted four lieutenants to captain on, Jan on December 31st of 2019 and got more money, a clear violation of not only 7 um, 7, 7 uh, 7-438 of our general statutes, but also a violation of 706 and 707 um, of our charter. Uh, they, they don't, you know, the thought of another department, like if Public Works just hired a new collector in mid-fiscal year, they would never do that. Public Works comes here year after year, begging and scrimping for workers, and finally last year they got a, a new uh, collector for, for their sanitation division and a new laborer for streets and roads. They don't hire in mid-fiscal year. They don't break the rules. The fire department, for some reason, can hire in mid-fiscal year whenever they want, and I don't understand it. I, I don't understand how this person could be hired and already on the books um, the line, if you notice from your expenditure report, the consultant line is already uh, already at 82500 through February. Let me just give you the history of this line when it was called a consultant. The first year was 1617 fiscal year. That's a partial year. He was hired in October. It was 62000 Then it was 89000 Not budgeted, by the way. It wasn't in the budget. 18, 19, 96000 Also not budgeted. Uh, 1920, it was not budgeted, and he got 91,000. I was complaining to Mr. Monaco about how uh, I came to before this board and complained, how can this consultant be paid all this money year after year when he's not budgeted? I never got an answer. I finally went to the town attorney, and lo and behold, the next year it appeared in the budget. Um, and in um, uh, 2021, that was the first time it was actually budgeted at 100,000 and um, it lined out at 91,000, 94,000. It's tracked now at 82,000 because now it's paying two people, obviously. It's paying not only the full-time guy who replaced Mr. Etherton, but now it's paying this new inspector who was already hired, even though this hasn't been approved by referendum yet. And if this line goes over 100,000, uh, you know, I'm not gonna be happy about that because he hasn't, 
Mr. Chairman, when Ms. Barrett asked, has he already been hired, you said, he can't be, it hasn't been approved yet. How yes, do you feel, sir, that he's already been hired? Um, that was news to me, obviously, Sally. Um, I guess I don't feel great, but, but truthfully, um, you know, I, I'll go back to what I said earlier in the meeting, which is <clears throat> my understanding is he needs to meet <clears throat> his budget for personnel. Now, I can recheck that with Jeff and ask for the specific example, but um, that's what's going through my head right now. Well, again, at the fire commission meeting in late February, I stated publicly for the record that I supported the, the position. I did. I just didn't want it to be called um, uh, uh, expense neutral. And I, I do support the position, but I hate it when people break the budgetary rules, and that's what has happened. He was hired without the funding. Why did he come before this board and ask for the funding when he, he'd already been hired? That's, you know, and that's why I read the exact wording from his report. It said, this will allow us to hire. It doesn't say it will fund what we've already done. And, and that's what bothers me. I support the position. I want to make that very clear. I support the $50,000. Uh, there is a lot of work that that fire marshal's office has to do. And I publicly said I supported it. But I don't like when people break budgetary rules. And that's what happened here. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you, Sally. I have a technical issue. There's no public comment on the agenda. I was wondering if we could add it. Uh, uh, I saw that, but I, I assume there was an oversight, honestly, Tammy. But uh, <coughs> I make a motion we uh, amend the agenda to allow for public comment. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Just, Thank you uh, so much. State your uh, name and address, please, sir. My name is Scott Friedman. My address is 17 Cooper Road. Um, I first just want to thank you all for the work that you're doing, the service to the town. <laughs> this is some very, very deep stuff uh, that we're going through. Um, I'm a parent of an incoming kindergartner. Um, I've been watching the Board of Ed specifically uh, as my daughter is coming into, uh, into the school there. Um, I really do fully appreciate the explanation uh, for some of the, the budgetary pressures, the mill rate pressure that you're facing. Um, I also think this is absolutely not the time to reduce the education budget. Specifically, we're dealing with COVID learning gaps, drying up federal and state funding, um, and I think I actually do want to spend a, a second on one particular item. You mentioned that ECS, educational cost sharing, which is the amount that the state provides to us for our education, is going up by 313000 In the same breath, you then took $250,000 away from the proposed budget. Uh, that ECS funding is critical to student success. Um, we need that to be going to students. If that is uh, sort of decreasing the amount that we need to cut in other areas, I would ask that you think about the idea of putting some of that funding back. Um, and you know, if that were to go up, which there's a bill uh, pending to potentially further increase that, uh, that we ensure that that funding goes to the Board of Ed. Scott, uh, there's, excuse me one second. There's, sure. That's a general. It's called ECS, we all know that, right? Sure. It's for education, we all know that. It comes in as a general item. It's, it just goes into the general from the town to be, sent, to be spent, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and just to give an idea, you probably know this, um, but you know, in, the, in the current year, we got about, call it $4 million mm -hmm. in ECS funding, which, which barely covers anywhere yeah. near, obviously, a $60 million budget, right? So it's, I understand your point. It's a little bit bigger picture than that. And my 100%. Opinion. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I do appreciate that explanation. Right. And, and generally, I, I appreciate the depth that we're right. going into this. Um, you know, I'm going to just leave a few statistics. Um, one of the Board of Ed members, Amanda Gabriel, had done some analysis on the budget. Uh, and in comparison to some of the other towns in our district resource group, uh, research, reference group, which are basically schools with similar backgrounds and uh, town shape. You know, the average year-over-year -year increase in those districts is 6.5%, um, and especially with the funding that's you know, drying up from the ESSER grant, um, I want to make sure that we don't impact the three positions that you talked about. And I, I think that the Board of Ed will figure out a way to do this, um, but I, I effectively want to make sure 
that in the future that we have transparency not from here to the end of the budget solely but really from the budget workshops to here uh, and I will ask respectfully that we find a way as a town to publish the initial budgets in an Excel spreadsheet format that can be used by the town to you know analyze uh, what is coming to you as a request and then what you go to the you know the Board of Finance next meeting with because personally I was shocked I was surprised by having watched the budget workshops and then coming here and already having seen a 250,000 decrease but um, uh, for Selectman Frida I want to thank you for your commitment not to further impact the Board of Ed funding if the budget referendum doesn't pass and I also want to give you my uh, utmost commitment to helping this budget pass regardless of where we find where we end up because I saw what happened in 2015 and the cuts came directly out of capital and Board of Ed um, in this particular set of cuts you know capital got the lion's share of the cuts but as first Selectman Frieda said a lot of those were things that we couldn't purchase during this year so I, I respectfully ask you to think about restoring some of that Board of Ed funding and also just to increase the transparency between budget workshop and this meeting. But I thank you. Great, thank you. Very thank much. you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, get this open. Uh, my name is Kieran Hearn. I live at 23 George Street. Um, I want to thank you guys all for the work you've done tonight. This is the first board meeting I've attended, and I have. I've learned a lot about just how the town functions in this one meeting, so I think it's been very well done, and I thank you all for that. I also want to thank you, Selectman Friedman, or sorry, Frida, for um, committing to not doing any potential budget cuts to the Board of Education. Um, that's primarily what I want to talk about tonight. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the inflation rate has been about 8.9%, but the town has only seen about 3.5%. Um, just, just one thing I'd like to point out to the board. I think the proposed increase was only about a 2.9% for the Board of Education, their year-over-year -year increase. Mm -hmm. um, with the $250,000 cut, it's down to about 2.4%. So essentially what we're seeing is in real dollars between last year and this year, about 1% decrease in actual um, dollars. So that was all I had to say, so thank you all. Great, thank, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that everyone on this board uh, thought that uh, Superintendent Sturk's presentation was uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, thought-provoking and, uh, and that the budget he presented was uh, lean and reasonable. And uh, so I, we do agree that uh, there's, there's not much to cut there because his, his budget was extremely responsible in the way it was uh, uh, explain to us and uh, the, the, the way uh, he appears to have allocated his uh, his dollars. Thank you, Mike. All right, not seeing anyone else motion to hit the podium. I uh, make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everybody. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.